Chatter of an incoming large-scale ground operation in Greater Idlib has ramped up following the apparent failure to negotiate any solution between Russian President Vladimir Putin and his Turkish counterpart Recep Tayyip Erdogan. As the days were leading up to Erdogan and Putin's meeting, the situation seemed rather calm and that remained for a few days. Following that, Hayat Tadi El Sham, HTS, and the other terrorist factions in Greater Idlib renewed their frequent ceasefire violations. The Syrian Arab Army, SAA, responded, and Russian Aerospace Forces VKS airstrikes also continued their near daily occurrence. On October 5th, the SAA sent a large convoy of reinforcements to the Idlib front lines, as seen in several videos. Turkey is also making its own deployments to Syria, sending reinforcements so as not to be caught unprepared in case of an operation starting. The Suraya Ansar Abu Bakr El Sadiq faction announced that it had used an IED to attack a convoy of the Turkish Armed Forces on the Nak Lai Erik Highway in the Syrian province of Idlib. The group is one of the terrorist factions in the region and is presumably protected by Turkey but still targets it. SAA shelling targeted the towns of El Bara and Kansafra and the villages of El Fatira, Freyfel, Sufun, and El Ruwaiha on Zawiya Mountain south of Idlib with rockets and heavy artillery. Additionally, bombing targeted the villages and towns of Tukad, Kafirnuran, and Makobis west of Aleppo and the Gab Plain west of Hama. The Turkestan Islamic Party targeted government's forces in the village of Tanjira west of Hama. The mutual shelling coincided with an intense flight of Russian drones over the targeted areas. For months, the northwestern regions of Syria have been witnessing mutual bombardment between the two sides of the conflict in different areas. There's certainly a limit to how long this constant exchange can continue before the SAA and Russia's VKS are forced to go on the offensive and move in.